Hello, everybody. I'm I am Kevin Bass from thedietwars.com, and I'm here to talk with you today about. Uh, I'm going to give you a review of one of the particularly salient points. What we can extract from the Netflix documentary, the best-selling Netflix documentary, The Game Changers, and how specifically following this advice exactly as presented and imbibing and uh, being influenced by the worldview that it presented could be potentially harmful to your health. Now, The Game Changers, as I've mentioned, is a documentary. It's available on Netflix and iTunes. It's one of the best-selling documentaries of all time on iTunes, and it will likely prove to be one of the most famous nutrition documentaries for years to come. Uh, this documentary, however, has a fatal flaw that puts a substantial number of its viewers at, at uh, substantial risk of potentially dangerous or even deadly adverse health outcomes. Here's how. Before I go, though, and continue with this doc review, I want to introduce myself very briefly. I'm a medical student, MD, PhD student, doing both degrees, finishing the PhD, I've done half of my medical training, studied uh, mainly ketogenesis, the effects of fiber in the gut on ketogenesis, potentially the gut as a ketogenic organ, and uh, hopefully potentially changing the story on the role that the gut plays in ketogenesis. And so uh, that's what I've been doing as a graduate student. I'm about to enter my last two years of medical school, and then I'll be done with my PhD and my MD as well. And uh, during this time, I've been very interested in nutrition, and I'm hoping that my uh, nutrition knowledge, my nutrition science knowledge, will be a benefit to people who are watching this review and learning about this film. So without further ado, let's talk about the film. So as you can see here, there is a graph. It's from a paper from 2017 from the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. And this is the graphical abstract of the paper, the main findings of the paper. And it's essential illustration, dose response relationship of plant-based diet indices in animal healthy plant and less healthy plant foods with, cardio, with coronary heart disease incidence. And as you can see from the graph, plant-based diet has a reduced risk of coronary heart disease. A healthy plant-based diet, a really healthy version of plant-based diet, has a even more reduced risk. The more plants you have within a healthy plant-based diet dietary pattern, the lower your risk of coronary heart disease. However, an unhealthy plant-based diet, this is plant-based, but it's consisting of an unhealthy pattern of plant foods, like lots of processed grains, lots of sugars, lots of hyper-palatable Oreo cookies, etc., things like that. Oreos are vegan and plant-based. The higher the risk of coronary heart disease. So plant-based diets are good, except if they're unhealthy. If they're unhealthy, they're actually bad. They're actually going to be more harmful than eating a diet that's omnivorous, has a lot of meat. So, that's that. This is a very famous and popular article. It's published by researchers at Harvard. And as I mentioned, it shows that eating more healthy whole plants is associated with a lower risk of heart disease. Mean meanwhile, eating more meat, animal foods, is associated with a higher risk. So cardiologists use this paper to communicate an important point. Going plant-based is not enough. One must eat healthy plant-based foods. If one replaces meat with unhealthy plant-based foods, this might make one's health worse. There's even a name for this, junk food vegans. Oreos are one of the classic vegan junk foods, and they are indeed widely promoted by animal rights organizations like PETA. I want to show you guys this. Yeah, 
it says, it's true, Oreos are vegan, did you know? All these other snacks are too. And it's a bunch of junk foods. And they're talking about Oreo cookies. Great. Likewise, here's a, I think a famous individual. Named Franklin Graham. Who is this Franklin Graham individual? 2.5 million followers. I think he's like official Twitter account for the president of Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangel Evangelistic Association. So a very famous person. He said, thank you, PETA, for the starter kit for my vegan diet. Wow, didn't know Oreo cookies were vegan. Okay. So, the, so PETA is promoting this junk food vegan diet. And according to the above study that I just showed you, the one from Harvard, and it's actually here right now on the screen. According to this above study, one is not doing one's health any favors by swapping meat for vegan pizza, ice cream, and Oreos. While vegan junk food might taste good, a plant-based diet rich in junk foods is actually worse for your health than the average omnivorous diet. So not all vegan diets are created equally. Some are even created worse. And this is where the game changers gets things wrong. It's surprising, therefore, and disappointing that this now well-known fact among plant-based health experts was not conveyed in the game changers. In some scenes, the film even seemed to suggest that replacing meat with junk food would produce better health. This is health misinformation. This is false, and it will lead to worse health outcomes among viewers who get this impression. So therefore, I decided to objectively analyze the problem. I quantitatively and qualitatively analyzed every line in the film using a search function on a document containing all speech in the film, then collating all statements containing particular keywords. Here's a screenshot of this work. Here's what I found. The word plant or plants appears 69 times. The vast majority, 65, were in a context arguing in favor of their consumption in lieu of meat without specifying what kinds of plant food should be eaten, which is very important because if you don't specify, you can end up with an unhealthy dietary pattern, okay? The word meat appeared 57 times. These were all also in the context of advocating their reduction without addressing what they would be replaced with. So there's, again, this ambiguity here where they're not focusing on the healthful side of plant-based diets, they're allowing the viewer to pick. And if the movie, the film is about game changers, meaning health and performance, definitely one should be eating whole plant foods and not these kinds of plant foods. Indeed, the concept of whole food veganism, or whole food plant-based diets was never introduced in the film, never. Emphasis was placed instead on hyper-processed vegan foods. And one should ask the question before we continue, why? My belief is that this film was oriented towards simply trying to get people to go plant-based. Not towards their health, not towards any other thing except trying to get people to go plant-based. In other words, it's essentially an ethical veganism film that promoted itself as a health slash exercise performance film. But it's actually, its main goal is simply to get people to go plant-based without a concern for whether or not it's good for their health. It has a lot of rhetoric about health, but when you actually see the foods, you see very clearly that they are promoting a very rich and ultra-processed uh, plant-based diet 
that will be highly palatable and appealing to people who uh, want to have essentially a junk food diet. And only two occasions were whole foods mentioned, and only in passing. They were as follows. A whole food plant-based diet is going to optimize the growth of blood vessels into damaged tissue. It's going to lay down new tissue and tendons and muscles. It's going to stimulate the immune system to fight off infections. That's the first quote. Second quote is, when you eat a healthy whole foods plant-based diet, it changes the expression of your genes. The term whole food plant-based diet is a staple among advocates of plant-based diets in the medical community. Yet neither of these cases was the concept explained of a whole foods plant-based diet. You never had in the entire film the concept of a whole food plant-based diet explained, even though whole food plant-based diet is a central concept among medical advocates of a plant-based diet. It is the central concept, but yet not explained a single time in the film. This is a grave mistake. While plant-based diets can be helpful, if they are composed of junk foods, they can be harmful. Alarmingly, these two statements that I mentioned above seem to endorse, sorry, alarmingly, there were two statements that seem to endorse vegan junk foods. The first is from Derek Morgan, an NFL player and a key interviewee in the film. And as he says, yeah, I love to eat. In the beginning, I was like, I gotta suck myself out to say I don't care about flavor anymore. It wasn't really a sacrifice. She was still cooking, you know, mac and cheese and chicken wings, just plant-based. This line implies that nothing needs to improve the diet so long as one goes vegan. And, you know, therefore one will enjoy improved health. One can eat the same mac and cheese and chicken wings, but if they're plant-based, they become healthy. This is inf misinformation. The second line is from his wife, Charity, just a few minutes later. Quote, these are plant-based burgers, grill up, smell, and taste like beef. And I'm making truffle mac and cheese, buffalo wings, kale Caesar salad, crispy Brussels sprouts with smoked sauce reduction, and we'll finish off with peanut butter cheesecake. End quote. Plant-based burgers on plant-based refined buns with plant-based buffalo wings and butter, peanut butter cheesecake. Sounds a lot like the unhealthy plant-based diet associated with higher heart disease mortality in the study above more deaths from heart disease. It sounds like that kind of diet. Here are some screenshots from the film. Right. There's a similar scene with Rip, El Rip, Rip Esselstein showing relatively more healthy plant-based foods. Yet while, while the scene with Ch Charity and Derek Morgan and teammates focused on the deliciousness of the junky vegan food, the health superiority of the foods introduced in the scene with Rip at the firehouse was never explained. In other words, there was an asymmetry in representing healthy versus unhealthy plant-based diets. And this asymmetry leaned in favor, of, in favor of unhealthy plant foods. This is a serious flaw. That said, there is one part of the film where James, James Wilkes, the director of the film speaks on the harms of refined carbohydrates. He says, I already knew that processed carbs like white flour and sugar can lead to weight gain. But what I didn't realize is that unprocessed carbohydrates like oats, bananas, and sweet potatoes were associated with decreased body fat. Yet this comes just one minute before the long scene showing the football players talking about and eating those junky vegan foods. Which part do you remember? The seconds dedicated to the harms of white flour and sugar or the minutes of videos dedicated to delicious looking, junky vegan foods containing white flour and sugar being consumed by some of the film's stars. So this promotion of unhealthy vegan foods and thus unhealthy vegans, was it intentional? The promotion of unhealthy foods was not an accident. It was intentional. The word vegan was mentioned 11 times in the film. In nine cases, all that was implied was that a vegan diet was better than a meat than a diet containing meat, without specifying what kind of vegan diet. Alarmingly, in two cases, junk vegan junk food was endorsed. Here we see, it's best to lead by example. Most people say, oh, I can't just become vegan. I said, you're right, it's a process to it. I'll give you guys some vegan chocolates. Here's the next one. I just really just, I like pizza. If I'm about to chow down like 
really get it, man, lasagna. If you like chicken nuggets, okay, they have vegan nuggets. If you like meatballs, they got vegan meatballs. A lot of pizza, pasta, and burgers, sometimes even at the same time. I will not give a timestamp to this line. Why? Because it was the closing line, the concluding line of the film. I'll read it again, the concluding line of the film. Really just, I like pizza, if I'm about to chow down, like really get it, man, a lasagna. If you like chicken nuggets, okay, they, got, they have vegan nuggets. If you like meatballs, they got vegan meatballs, a lot of pizza, pasta, and burgers, sometimes even at the same time. In other words, the film closed by emphasizing unhealthy vegan food. This implies a lack of emphasis on healthy vegan food and the focus on unhealthy vegan food was an intentional design feature of the film. Let's look at the graph again that we saw at the beginning of this video. And let's think for a moment about what the apparently the apparent focus on healthy vegan foods implies. This problem could have been fixed with just a few minutes of single of a, just a single interviewee emphasizing and explaining the importance of plant-based diet that is rich in whole foods. But in the entire 83-minute documentary, this was never done, not once. Instead, the film closed with the line endorsing a, pl a plethora of unhealthy vegan foods, sometimes even just, sometimes even at the same time, is the quote. Sometimes even at the same time. What about the website for the Game Changers? On the core principles page of the website, we, follow, we find the following paragraph, quote, while most people understand that sugary drinks like soda, fried food, like potato chips and refined flour products like white bread and, or pastries are definitely not ideal for optimizing health or fitness. Few people understand that a diet based on animal foods, whether whole or heavily processed, like chicken breast or eggs or bacon or cheese, is a far greater concern than misguided fears about eating too many carbs. And even fewer understand that the overwhelming body of scientific evidence shows that choosing a diet centered around a wide variety of plants, especially in their whole form, is the single most powerful tool we have in the prevention, treatment, and even reversal of many of our most common diseases. This first sentence alone is confusing. For people who did not understand precisely what carbohydrates are and confused them with white bread and pastries, this first sentence seems to even excuse hyper-processed foods like these, suggesting that animal products are more harmful. This is false. Animal products are, pro are likely less harmful than these ultra-processed carbohydrate foods. The second sentence is the real zinger. Let's look at the most confusing part. Quote, the overwhelming body of scientific evidence shows that choosing a diet centered around a wide variety of plants, especially in their whole form, is the single most powerful tool we have. End quote. The operative word is not especially. It is only. It is only in their whole form. That is how the phrase should read. Refined junky plant foods are not helpful in the prevention of disease. So it's not especially in their whole form, it's only. Not especially, because if it's especially, then even the refined foods are even better than animal foods, and that's not the case. This sentence implies that a whole food part of the plant-based diet is optional. This is not true, and a diet consisting of many refined foods would cause greater harm to health than the average omnivorous diet will. When we click on the recipes page, we find a similar ambiguity with the opening image. Junk food, veganized. This will not improve health. Foods like, the, foods like these replacing other breakfast foods like eggs may well harm health. Now, what is the role of animal foods and unprocessed foods in a healthy diet? Okay, this does not imply that junk food should never be consumed. They can be consumed in moderation. Yet this film never makes this distinction. This is unfortunate because the basic piece of nutritional literacy would be helpful to people who believe that simply avoiding meat will improve their health. Simply avoiding meat will not improve your health. If most of your calories are coming from hyper-processed foods like pastries, bagels, crackers, donuts, etc., then your health would probably be better off if you replace these calories with animal foods. Without these caveats, the film should be regarded as harmful for public health and should not be promoted in, or shown in public institutions. Contrary to what James Wilkes claimed on the Joe Rogan experience, 
This film does not effectively primarily extol the health virtues of a healthy plant-based diet. Rather, it really does prioritize the promotion of veganism in the name of health, but for many people who will be confused by the film's messaging, despite, despite the negative health consequences that will ensue. Coming from someone who consumes a prop predominantly whole foods, plant-based diet, I believe, much to my dismay, that this film risks causing significant damage to the cause of predominantly plant-based diets. Coming from someone who consumes a predominantly whole foods plant-based diet and who believes that predominantly plant-based diets can be healthy and should be more, much more widely consumed, I believe, much to my dismay, that this film risks causing significant damage to this cause. If you want optimal health on a plant-based diet, the large majority of calories must come from unprocessed foods. If you would like ideas about how to achieve this, Google Whole Foods Plant-Based Diet and you can get started. And that's our review. More, it's a critique of some of the central messaging um, tendencies of the film, as you've seen. If you like this video, um, check me out on my podcast at The Kevin Bass Show on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Also uh, on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, I have a YouTube channel at The Kevin Bass Show. It's also, you can search KBass Philadelphia to find it. Also find me on social media. I'm Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Kevin and Bass, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. -S. You can also find me on Patreon at Kevin and, ba Kevin and Bass, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S -S, to donate to make sure that I continue putting out this great content. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify and leave a comment on the YouTube channel you see below. Just write random gibberish if you need to, but leave a comment. It'll help the algorithm. It'll help my video get promoted out there more. Like the video, please. Please click the like button and please click subscribe if you haven't already on the right-hand corner. That's right. Click subscribe if you haven't already. And like the video, please. That would be much appreciated. And give me feedback. Tell me what I can do better or worse. Or, 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 sorry, tell me what I can do better and tell me what I'm doing well. And that would be much appreciated. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the review. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.